بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله This is our second session of purification of the heart Thank you again all of you for being here We covered a lot of information on Tuesday and I know I watched the video afterwards and I know I was going a little fast at certain times and I apologize if I was going too fast, but I'm going to do this sort of summary every class before we get into the new material. So don't worry. And if you have any questions, the chat box is open, but it's, uh, oh, it's going to come to me and my co-host, Sister Homera, who is also here, and she's going to facilitate. So if you have certain questions about anything that I'm saying at any time, feel free to use that chat box. Um, and just, you know, let's uh, enjoy the rest of this, uh, this program together, inshallah. I want participation, especially right now. Uh, so right now I'm going to just do a quick refresher by first asking some questions to see who is really paying attention on Tuesday, okay? So first, can, who can tell me the name of the author who wrote the poem that was written in Arabic. We went over his biography, okay? So if you can type it in the chat box. I have someone who already, mashallah, gave their answer very quickly. I love it. I love that you were on it. But I'm not talking about the translator, okay? I'm talking about the person who actually, mashallah, noor, there we go. Noor got it. Jazakallah khair and Noor, you wrote the right answer. Imam Mawlud or Imam al Mawlud, right? So Imam Mawlud is the one who wrote the Arabic text, okay? And he's the one whose poem uh, the next person translated. So now, if Imam Mawlud is the one who wrote the Arabic text, who is the one who wrote the English? Uh, translation of his text. Okay, mashallah, there we go. We got Bilal, we got Yasin, and actually before all of you, uh, he, he answered first, uh, San, right? You're the one who said uh, Hamza Yusuf first, so that was very good, mashallah, but that was for the translator. So good job. At least you guys know the names of these two very important people. So Imam al Mawlud is the one who wrote the Arabic text, okay? He wrote the Arabic poem about 200 years ago. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, who's still alive and well, alhamdulillah, he's here in Berkeley, he translated it into English. So make sure you know his name. It's very important. Now, before we jumped into some of the diseases, I described a couple or a few, more than a few, I should say, different types of hearts. Who can tell me first the number? How many hearts are there described in the Quran, Hadith, or in the commentary of some of these uh, texts? Very good, mashallah, you guys are all getting the right answer. So let's look at the chat to see who answered first. Um, I think this, this was is, Ishan, right? Ishan or Ishal, Ishal and Zaina. Okay, so I have Ishal and Zaina, mashallah. And then Rahil, very good, Alina, Noor. All of you gave the right answer, mashallah, amen. Yasin, Saqib, Aisha, very good. Ismail, Maryam, awesome job, you guys. You guys are paying attention. I love it. Jazakallah khairan. Okay, so now a quick question. Of all the different hearts that we covered, which is the most important one? Which is the one we should all have and we should all want to have? Very good, mashallah. You guys are coming with the answers so quickly. I love it. So, okay, Yasin, Noor, Misha, Ishal, very good, Aisha, Afnan, Maryam, um, Alina, I love Alina. You said the shining heart. Everybody else said the sound heart. Very good. So, the shining heart, the sound heart, very good. Does anybody remember the Arabic word for it? Because that's the English meaning. Who can tell me the Arabic word or the term? It's a term. Okay, who remembers the Arabic? Let's see. Oh, mashallah, Maryam, you got it. Qalb Salim or Qalbun Salim. Very good, Maryam, mashallah, tabarakallah. Awesome job. I wish there was like a point system, but very good. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to go to the first three diseases that we covered. Who can type the first three diseases? 
Okay, very good. We got miser or miserliness, stinginess. Or, okay, good. And mashallah, Ehsan, you wrote the Arabic. Awesome. You wrote bukhul. I love it. So you gave me, some of you have given me the English. Some of you are giving me the Arabic. Oh, this is awesome, mashallah. Very good. Okay, let me just quickly pull up my uh, slides because I want to make sure I am um, uh, have, have everything ready here. Okay, bismillah. Okay, very good. So let's see. I'm sorry. So go back to the chat. So you guys got miserliness. What's the second disease of the heart that we covered? So we covered miserliness, right? Which is bukhul in Arabic. Very good, mashallah. Wantonness, yes. And butter, awesome, Ahsan. And Afnan, you guys are on it. You, you definitely got it. And then Noor, Noor coming in, sliding in with all three answers in her, uh, in her response, mashallah. Very good, Noor. I'm going to see who else remembers the third one. The third disease of the heart. Give me the English and the Arabic, if you can remember the Arabic as well. Okay, let's see. Very good, Ihsan got it. Great job. So mashallah, Noor, you got all three. Excellent. Rahil, Yasin, Aisha, great job. So Bughad, right? So we covered miserliness, which is Bughal, wantonness, butter, and hatred, Bughad. You guys rock. Very good job. Thank you guys for, uh, for mashallah, giving me, uh, again, that sense that you were paying attention and that you retained, which means that you remembered what we talked about. That's really exciting. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and move into today's lesson. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to quickly cut out my camera. So you guys are not going to see me. And then I'm going to go into the screen share. So you guys will see my desktop as soon as I expand this. Okay, let's see, bismillah. One second, you guys, sorry. Alhamdulillah. Okay. This should hopefully be. Okay. So let's see, why it is it not expanding? Huh, sorry guys, I'm trying to make this expand. It was working just a second ago, but let's quickly check why this isn't working. Um, bismillah. Presenter view, hopefully it'll come right on, okay? So just give me one second. Okay, bismillah. There we go. Yay. Okay. So thank you again for your patience. Here we go. So now you guys should be able to see the entire screen, not a tiny little screen. So we're going to go through the slides, some of the slides that we saw last time. And uh, we'll go through all of these hearts, which we talked about. Ooh, there's that picture. <laughs> okay. And here's the full list of the diseases of the heart. This is what we covered. The first three we covered last time, which is miserliness, stinginess, and wantonness and hatred, which we just talked about. Now we're going to go into number four, which is iniquity or transgression. Bari, okay, bari in Arabic. And the meaning of this is it's hatred for other than the same, or excuse me, harming anything in creation without a just cause, okay? So if you ever cause harm to something without reason, this would be bari, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, talk about bari. We're going to fast forward through all of these because we already went through. Here we go. So Bari is harming anything in creation without a just cause, which means without a good reason. If you're going to harm something, like sometimes, you know, um, you'll see uh, adults or kids, just people walking um, down the street and then they see um, a bug and they just squash it, right? Why would you squash an innocent bug? That's not nice. That bug was just living its life. It didn't do anything to you. So we don't harm things without reason, especially if you're just, you know, walking by something or you see people pulling out grass or flowers, you know, when they are at a park, You'll, they'll just go and just start pulling out things. We want to be careful not to cause harm to anything, right, um, in creation. So those are just smaller examples. But of course, this can be a big problem if it's not checked, right? Because with the diseases of the heart, some people can have like, a, just like with any disease, you can have it like a mild 
kind of version of it or like a really serious. So a mild version would just be wanting to like destroy things, right? Just harming things, destroying things, destroying property, destroying, uh, like I said, innocent uh, creations like bugs and animals, kicking a cat or a dog. These are all haram. You cannot do that. It's not permissible, right? Uh, but when it gets uh, in a, a worse form, this can be very, very dangerous because it can lead to a lot of terrible things happening, right? So the word bari is derived, and this is again important to know because it explains the meaning and how we got the meaning of this disease of the heart. It's derived from the Arabic root word for desire, ragaba. So bari is desiring something so bad that you're willing to harm someone or something else for it. Like you're you know, whatever that thing is that you want, um, you're willing to destroy something else. This is why it's such a dangerous and terrible disease of the heart. So let's talk about how this can be come in a, in a bigger form, in the worst form possible, right? Bari is something that leads often to obsession with power. So if you look at some of the world's most notorious leaders, like the worst leaders throughout history, they were afflicted with this disease, right? And they caused mass uh, genocide. Genocide is when you kill a lot of people at the same time for no reason, just because you want power. Maybe you don't like a particular group of people, right? And throughout history, that's, that, that's definitely happened where people have harmed entire uh, villages, cities, groups of people just, just because they, they wanted to and for no good reason, uh, just because they didn't like them or they wanted power. So bari can bring a lot of harm if it's not treated, right? It causes this disease, again, of power and wealth. Other people that are also have this problem are criminals, right? People who steal, for example, or who destroy other people's properties. Why do they do what they do? It's for, you know, maybe they want something, right? If a, if a, if a thief goes into someone's home, um, they're not caring about the safety of that family or those people inside the home. They just want what they want. But maybe if they're, you know, confronted by someone, they will hurt them because they want to run away before the police come and catch them. So they basically really don't have that value for human life. And they'll do whatever they can to get what they want, right? Which is why it's so dangerous. So Criminals, thieves, they have this disease, but another group of people also have a version of this disease. And that's something, a term that you might all know, which are bullies, okay? Bullies want sometimes to become popular or liked by certain people, or they want power, right? Like it, it, they want to, to have other people scared of them. So what they do is they'll ridicule, mock, sometimes even fight people who are less, you know, maybe weaker than them or smaller than them, uh, all just to get something uh, for themselves. So they don't really care. So this is why, again, it's such a dangerous disease of the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and warns us about uh, Baghi, right? He says that all faces shall be humbled before him, the living, the, sub the subsisting, eternal, hopeless indeed will be the man that carries iniquity on his back. So he's saying that the person who has this disease of the heart is going to be hopeless on the day of judgment. That means that they're not going to be safe because they ha caused so much harm to people in this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to call them to account. He's, they're going to have to face him. And then um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Who's Islam, or uh, sorry, Abu Musa reported that they said, they asked the Prophet a question. They said, oh, messenger of Allah, whose Islam is best, right? And he answered, the one from whose tongue and hand Muslims are safe. So making sure that you don't cause harm to people, right? With your words or your hands is a big part of being a Muslim. So you cannot have baghi and be a practicing Muslim at the same time. If you're someone that causes people harm uh, with, with your words, or like I said, with your hands, this is definitely something we have to treat. We have to stop that behavior, right? Um, so inshallah, that is what we have for baghi. And here's the treatment for it. So the first part of the treatment that Imam al-Mawlud suggests is 
having certainty that the day of judgment is real and that every single person is going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be asked about why they did what they did and that nothing escapes the knowledge of Allah, right? He knows everything, he sees everything, and he's the most just. All people are going to be asked. Every single one of us will have to answer for what we did. So we should know that. And once you know that firmly, then it should protect you and prevent you from, uh, from iniquity, from baghi, from doing this, where you harm other people. Another thing is to remember death, okay? Remembering death is similar because you remember, like, I have to leave this world. So whatever power I want, whatever control I want, whatever money I want, it doesn't last. It's going to eventually, it's not going to matter because I can't take it with me when I die, right? And we don't know when that time is. For some people, they live a long life. Other people, maybe not that long. But the point is, all of us, we only uh, we don't take anything with us when we die, right? That's the only thing we take with us is our good deeds, right, or our deeds, and then we're going to be asked about that on the day of judgment. So very important to remember these things frequently, and the more you remember them, it prevents you from having baghi. Okay, so that is the first disease that we're going to talk about today. Now the next one is kind of related because certain parts of baghi or baghi is, is, is fueled by the desire for something, right? You want something and therefore you're willing to hurt people for it. So that desire is what we're going to talk about now when we talk about the next disease of the heart, which is love of the world or in Arabic, hubba dunya, okay? So the love of the world is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about in the Quran because it's something that can distract us, right? It can take us away from uh, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he tells us here in chapter 6, verse 32, he says, And the life of this world is nothing but play and amusement, but far better is the house in the hereafter for those who are pious. Will you not then understand? So he's trying to tell us, like, don't get too caught up in this small world, uh, short world, because it's not going to last very long compared to eternity, right? Uh, we're going to be here we're, for a short time, and we should just focus on what we're supposed to do, which is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the next life is so much better. It's longer. We're going to be with our loved ones, and we won't have all the problems and the issues that, that we have in the dunya. So basically, stay focused. And then he says, let not this present life deceive you, which is to also just kind of warn us, like, don't be tricked by the dunya, because the dunya can be so distracting, right? If you, like I said, start work, worrying about money and clothes and cars and all the different things you want, you'll just forget to do other things, right? It's, that's the power of the, the dunya, is that it can basically take you away from your responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to your parents, your family, your work. It can just uh, take you away because you keep wanting more and more and more. So the Prophet ﷺ actually gave us many different hadith that talked about this disease of the heart. But there's one in particular that really talks about the time that we're living in now, right? Where he says that nations are about to unite and call each other to set upon you, just as diners are invited to a plate of food. So then someone asked, is it going to be, be because of our lack of numbers that day? Will we be small in number? So what the Prophet just described, he said that the Muslim ummah is going to, uh, base, there's going to be other people that are going to come and just kind of start taking from our lands, you know, like the, the Muslim lands throughout the world. The way that a, a person who's really hungry comes to a dinner table and just jumps on a plate of food. So they were kind of confused because, you know, they were strong people. So they didn't understand, like, how could that be? And so their immediate uh, thought was maybe it's because we're not going to be that many. There's not going to be that many Muslims. And that's why we're going to be so powerless. Like all these countries are going to be able to invade our countries and take what they want. So that's what they were thinking, right? So they asked, is it going to be because our numbers, like we're going to be small in number? And the Prophet said, no, you're going to be many on that day, but you will be like the foam that floats on the ocean. 
So the provincialism is telling us is that the, the, in terms of numbers, population, Muslims are going to be very, like there's going to be a lot of Muslims, but there's, uh, we're going to be like the foam that floats on the ocean. And I'll explain what that means in a second. And then he says, Allah will remove the fear of you from the hearts of your enemies and put wahan into your hearts. So two things are going to happen. These forces that are invading in Muslim lands, they're not going to be scared of you. You're not strong people. They're not intimidated by you. You're weak, basically. And Allah, and they put wahan into your hearts, right? There's wahan. So then they were like, wait, uh, what does that mean? So they asked, O Messenger of Allah, what is wahan? And he said, love for the dunya and hatred for death. So what he's basically telling us in this hadith is that that uh, that we even though we have large numbers, right? Muslims are large in population, we become weak. And we're so weak that other forces can will start invading our countries and taking things from our countries. So some of you may know people from certain parts of the world. I, for example, was born in Afghanistan, right? There's many other uh, people who uh, were born in different Muslim lands who have had this experience where other governments, other people came into the country, took what they wanted and left, right? It's happened in Iraq and Syria and so many other places in the Muslim world, right? And so why does this happen? Well, the Prophet ﷺ told us it's because we, he's putting the responsibility back on us, right? He said that we have a love for the dunya, right? Which is, and we'll talk about, you know, the different types of love that we can and can't have. And we have a hatred for death. So we don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because death is really one step closer to meeting Allah, right? And so anybody who hates death, they don't want Jannah, they don't want to meet Allah. So if you have both of these uh, problems or issues, then it's, is it, you know, any wonder why you see so much of the Muslim world in the state that it's in? It's because we need to not have these diseases of the heart, right? Both of them are diseases of the heart, love for the dunya and hatred for death. So now let's just examine this a little bit more, okay? The froth of the ocean, this is a really good analogy. Look at that man in the first picture, how small he looks in compared, comparison to the foam, right? The foam of the ocean, depending on where you're standing, can go really, really far. So that's, it's a pretty you know, large swath of, of, of foam that you're looking at here. And this is just one little you know, area of, of, in the world. But oceans are huge. They make up the most uh, you know, part of the, of the entire globe, right? It's water. So, but look on the right picture and you see that it's like soap, right? Doesn't it look like soap, right? So when you go wash your hands and you lather your hands really well and then you see a bunch of soap in the sink, that's what this looks like. It's light, it's airy, it has no weight, which means it's not something strong, right? It's not something strong. So the Prophet ﷺ used this analogy to say, we're going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of Muslims and right now there's about almost 8 billion people in the world and one, I think about 1.5 or 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. So we are one eighth, one eighth of the world population. And mashallah, Muslims are in every part of the world, okay? We're not just in certain parts, we're everywhere. But even though we have that many numbers, are we as strong? No, we're not. We're like the foam of the ocean. And why? Because we're, too many of us are afflicted with the disease of hubba dunya, okay? And what is hubba dunya? Here we go. This is hubba dunya. You wanting all of the best of the best of the best of the best. You want a huge house. You want the nicest car. You want gold and jewelry and money and the, you know, eating the most lavish meals and all the nicest accessories. You just keep wanting and wanting and wanting that you it starts to make what in your heart? Greed, right? It builds this other disease of the heart, greed, where it's just never enough right? And this is kind of what we talked about on Tuesday, wantonness. Wantonness is you can't control your desire for things. You become prideful. So these, all these diseases kind of, you know, affect each other. If you have wantonness or love of the dunya, you're probably going to share a lot of the same qualities, which are that you just keep wanting more and more and more, and you start to have, so you have greed and you start to have 
pride, right? So these are the dangers of, of, of uh, having hubadunya is that it makes you keep, uh, it, it leads to these other dangerous diseases, right? Greed and pride. So again, we're looking at, you know, extra when you're, when you're doing, when it's out of balance, it's excess, it's too much. Habadunya is when that desire for these things takes over you, okay? And so let's look at, again, the other consequence of Habadunya, because not only do you get more greedy and prideful, but you're probably going to be, become very forgetful. So this is the danger, is that if you spend all your day daydreaming about money and about all the nicest clothes and food and the big house and the fastest car and just all of that stuff, you're going to start to forget certain things that are very, very important. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this is the problem. This is what shaitan wants. Shaitan, remember, he's our greatest enemy. So he wants nothing more than for us to forget Allah, forget our prayers, forget the Prophet ﷺ. And so what he does is he distracts us by making the world look so shiny and like exciting and fun, 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 that that's all we want. We just want to have fun and just have the best of the best things. So people afflicted with this disease of the heart, this is what they do. They'll just sit home and they'll just be thinking about all these things. But then guess what happens? They forget to pray. They forget the Prophet them, right? They forget Allah. They forget to give charity because they're too worried about making money for themselves. Um, they, they don't want to fast because they want to eat all the best foods and just spend, you know, all this money on, on the best experiences, going to the fanciest restaurants. They forget to go to the masjid. They forget to study and to learn, right? We're supposed to learn every day of our lives. We should be learning something, right? They don't spend time with their parents. They forget to take care of their family, pay their debts, because usually you can't keep this lifestyle. If you have habadunya, you start to get credit cards and start borrowing money. And so you get debt, okay? Debt is when you owe people something. So a lot of uh, people with this disease also have wantonness, which is the same, which we talked about too, that it makes them go into debt, okay? Um, they also forget to stay in touch with their friends, take care of their responsibilities, take care of the earth. They don't care about taking care of the earth because all they care about is wanting whatever they want, right? And that's why uh, they'll spend a lot of money on clothes and other things, not realizing that the more money you spend on things, the more it causes you know, pollution in the world, right? We, we, there's a lot of pollution that happens because of factories and all of the, you know, cheap materials that, that go into making certain products. So as a Muslim, we have to, what, be more responsible with our spending and not just keep spending, spending, spending. And then the last thing uh, or another thing is death. You don't remember death. And that's the very thing that you should be remembering to protect from this disease of the heart, right? So very important to know the consequences of love of the, of, of the world. Now, um, the next thing to remember is the, you know, the treatment. How do we treat this? Well, we said remembrance of death, right? That's one of the ways that we can treat this. The Prophet said, remember often the destroyer of pleasures, okay? And he meant by that death, that death destroys pleasure. And so all those things that we Taught, uh, that we showed in that picture. They're all things that are nice. Nobody's saying they're not nice. But again, if it takes over you the desire to want those things, and all you care about is having things and, you know, just being, uh, seeking out whatever desires you have, then it's a problem. So the best way to remedy that or to fix that is to remember death. Okay. And then also another treatment is being balanced in how to love the world and all that it contains in a way that's pleasing to Allah. Because the opposite of, or the, you know, loving the world is not necessarily a problem in and of itself. It's when you love the world to a point that you love it more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than other things, right? You just keep wanting more of the dunya and you don't want to ever leave the, the dunya because you want to extend your life as much as possible so you can eat, drink, go on vacations and just have a lot of fun, go to parties. 
wear fancy clothes. That's the problem, right? So there is a way to have a balanced love for the world, and that's part of the treatment as well, okay? And here it is. So first, we have to understand that there are five categories of love of the world, okay? So there are things that we have to love, obligatory, wajib, uh, recommended, mandub, permissible, mubah, reprehensible, makruh, and forbidden, haram. So basically what this is, is every single thing in the dunya can fall under one of these categories, right? For example, something that you should love is what? The Quran, right? The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu things that we have in this dunya, right? The Prophet Sallallahu himself, the Kaaba, there's, you know, the, the Masjid and Nabawi, uh, basically any house of Allah or any good place, we should love those things, right? And then there's the recommended, right? The permissible, what you can like, what you can uh, love. It's permissible, for example, to love certain uh, foods or even like we talked about on Tuesday, if you have a, love for really nice expensive things that's not a problem it's if you don't have a balance with that love that you would be willing to harm someone to get that thing right let's say for example you go to a store and you see a watch and this watch is so beautiful and you're like oh my gosh it's the most beautiful thing in the world i want this watch i want this watch i want this watch okay now, if you go back home and you look at your piggy bank or you go and you ask your parents like, hey, mom, dad, I want to do some chores in the house because I really want to purchase this watch that I love. Uh, what chores can I do? And then they tell you, okay, you can do this, this, and this, and you start saving your money, right? There's nothing wrong with if you saved your money and you said, I'm going to go buy, uh, buy that watch because it's a nice thing and you worked hard for it, right? But if you wanted that watch and then you thought about it and you said, oh man, it's like $500. I'm never going to make $500. How can I get this watch? What can I do? And then, you know, Shaitan will come and he'll kind of give you an idea. He'll say, I have an idea. Go to the store and distract, you know, the, the person at the checkout place and just go grab it real fast, right? This is how Shaitan works. He comes and he whispers to us things, right? So he might put that thought in your mind and now all of a sudden, astaghfirullah, you have what? This is iniquity, right? This is causing harm because of your desire. The desire is so much, you can't help yourself. You're willing to harm someone or something for it, right? So we have to be very careful of that. But as far as wanting the watch, that's perfectly fine, right? Um, something reprehensible or makru would be, for example, to... Uh, delay your prayers, okay? We should pray on time. When the prayer comes in, as soon as you know that it's dhuhr, asr, maghrib, you should pray. If you make a habit out of delaying your prayers, this is not permissible, or it's a reprehensible, it's makru, it's disliked, okay? It's not haram, it's not, you know, uh, it's certainly not, uh, you know, recommended or permissible. It's makru. So you have to know the difference that everything in the world falls under one of these categories. And then the forbidden we know are haram. You should not like, you know, alcohol or eating certain foods that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, right? That would not be very good at all to, to, uh, to love those things which Allah dislikes. So... Love of the world is about having balance, about understanding that everything in Allah's creation falls under one of these categories, okay? And then the Prophet said, I'm warned, because remember, we're, when we talk about love of the dunya being a disease of the heart, that does not mean that the answer for it is to hate the dunya. No, 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 astaghfirullah. The Prophet actually told us and warned us, do not curse the world. The for God created the world and the world is a means to reaching the knowledge of God. So what he's saying is that don't think that, you know, the opposite of hubba dunya is to have a bad view of the world and to be like, oh, I hate this place and I want to leave and I can't wait to go to Jannah. And you have a very bad opinion of the dunya. 
No, we should have balance. There's good in the dunya and there's harm in the dunya. And we love that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and we don't love that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love. That's how we look at the dunya and that's balanced. People with hubba dunya, they don't have balance. They love too many things that distract them from the worship of Allah. That's why it's a disease of the heart. But to say, I love Allah's creation, I love the sun and the stars and the moon and the parks and the rivers and the lakes and the trees and the oceans and the beaches and the good delicious fruits and the vegetables and the beautiful animals, that's actually very good. We should. We should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the beauty of the dunya that he's placed us in because he could have placed us in a dry planet like Mars, right? Mars is dry. There's no, barely any water there. It's like a giant desert. He could have put us in a planet like that, but he put us in this big huge, beautiful, basically garden, right? That it's so amazing. And there's just so many things that we can uh, appreciate uh, when we look around all the colors that we see and the different variety of animals, as we said, right? And flowers and flora and, and trees. These are all reasons that we should have what immense gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the balance is so important to treat hubba dunya. You have to have a balanced view and the best thing to do is just to say, I'm going to love everything that Allah loves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is what? The most beautiful and He loves beauty, beautiful things. So we can always uh, love that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And He He dislikes uh, foul things, you know, things that are not good. So we should also dislike things that are not good. Okay? Very good, alhamdulillah. So that was the second disease. The third disease is called envy or hasad, okay? What is this? This is a huge disease of the heart, okay? And a lot of people are afflicted with hasad. What is it? It is a form of uh, jealousy, which we're going to clarify because sometimes envy and jealousy are used to, to define hasad, but they are slightly different. But before we do that, let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says specifically about this disease. He, in chapter 4, verse 54, he says, Or do these people envy what Allah has bestowed upon them from his bounty? Okay, and we'll, again, explore what that word means. And then he says, seek refuge from the evil of the envier when he envies, right? And this is, we all know this, uh, this surah, right? قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Right? It, we, inshallah, we all know this surah. This surah is describing the envier, okay? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, stay away from hasad, from envy, for hasad eats up good deeds like fire eats up wood. So I want you to imagine that, okay? When you go put a fire somewhere, if you've ever been camping or if you have a fireplace, as soon as you put that firewood in and you light it up, what happens to the wood? It starts to crackle, right? And then very quickly you see it, just there's smoke and then all of a sudden there's this roaring fire. If you come back and check on that, after a few minutes, part of it will be gone. The wood is turned into ashes, right? So here he's warning us that having hasad, which is a type of jealousy, and again, we're going to define it in a minute, is so bad that it eats up good deeds like fire eats up wood. So let's understand the difference between envy and jealousy. Because like I said, it's usually used a lot the same way. Um, jealousy or envy is the desire to have something that's not yours. So basically, let's say you go to school, okay, or you're at the mall or you're at the masjid or wherever, and you see someone who looks your age, okay, maybe they're 15, 16, maybe they're 12, 13, but another person who looks your age and they're the same as you. If you're a boy, he's a boy. If you're a girl, she's a girl. You look at them and they're wearing a shirt that you like. Maybe it's got something on it that you like too. Maybe if you're into Legos, the shirt is on Legos, or maybe it's got unicorns and butterflies on it, but whatever, whatever you see this person who's the same age as you wearing, you really like what they're wearing and you wish you had it, okay? Now, it's not yours, right? 
and you don't want that. So envy is like, you don't want them to have it. It's like, why do they get to have that? That's not fair. I want that. Um, it would look better on me. And you start having all these really, really bad thoughts. That's envy, right? It's spite. It's basically this desire that turns into this resentment of towards the other person, okay, where you just really don't even like that person anymore and you wish they didn't have it because it bothers you. It bothers you that they are wearing it and that you're wearing something that is maybe an older thing or that you've had for a while or what it's not as exciting. So you the envy just turns the into your heart into this, you know, really resentful uh, you know, uh, the thing that, that you just can't think anything positive about that person, right? Now, jealousy is an emotion, right? And it typically refers to the negative thoughts and feelings of insecurity, fear, and anxiety over an anticipated loss of something. So if you're worried about losing something, that can be jealousy, right? Like, oh, I wish I didn't, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, like if you're comparing yourself to somebody else that they have something, but it's not that you necessarily want them to not have it. You just wish you could have it too. Or uh, if you already have it, you're, a, you know, you wish that you didn't lose it. So there's these, it's a different feeling. It's not about the person themselves that you're looking at. It's just about your own insecurity. That's jealousy, right? But envy is actually wanting the other person to lose what they have. So it's not just that you like it and that you want it for yourself and that you're insecure over it. It's that you actually want that other person to not have it anymore. And that's why it's so much worse. So envy is much worse than jealousy, right? Jealousy can just come from, like I said, so many different things that uh, may happen to you. And it may not even involve another person. It's just uh, something that you want, right? Whereas envy is directed towards another person. And that's why it's so dangerous. Okay. So what's the treatment? Well, first again, and we see the same thing keep coming up. If you notice most of the diseases of the heart, the treatment is almost all of it. The ones that we've learned so far is remembrance of death, right? Why? Well, one of our, uh, the Sahaba Abu Darda said, he who remembers death often then his delight becomes less and his enviousness of others diminishes. So people who remember death a lot, they just stop really caring about what other people are doing, what they're wearing, how much money they have, what clothes, you know, uh, what kind of car they drive. They don't care because they're more worried and more concerned about the next life right? That's what the remembrance of death does. It makes you focus on what's important and you stop worrying about other people. And you realize like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who distributes. That means he's the one who gives everybody whatever that he wills for them. So for some people, they're going to have a lot of money, but guess what? Having a lot of money is a big responsibility. And if you don't do what he expects of you, you're going to have a lot to answer for, right? So it's not always so exciting if you think of it that way. Uh, for other people, he might have given them knowledge and he expects that they teach and use that knowledge to teach other people, right? So every, the, everything is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives to people according to what he wants. And therefore, there's no reason to be jealous because you have certain things, blessings that other people don't have, right? We all have things that not everybody else has. So the best thing to, thing to do is not focus on what other people have, but rather focus on what Allah has given you and be grateful for it. And remember again, that death, when it comes, you don't take anything with you except for your qalbun salim, right? That's all we should want to take with us more than anything else. We want that sound heart, right? But nothing else really matters. So that's why the remembrance of death is so good. And then Imam al-Ghazali also said what? And this is to help clarify, right? Because not everybody who has these feelings is afflicted with the disease itself, right? So he said that if someone hates envy and is ashamed that he has it or she has it in her heart, 
then that person is not really an envious person. So if you've ever felt that way about someone where you might have felt envy, maybe you went to someone's house and their house was bigger than yours. Maybe um, you know you saw someone at school and their car, they came, their mom and dad came and picked them up in a really nice sports car and you were like, man, I wish my parents could have that. You know, if you've ever had those feelings, but then later you realized, or maybe you're realizing right now, as we're talking about this, that those feelings aren't good to have and you feel bad about it. Like it's, it's like, oh, astaghfirullah, I wish I didn't think that about that person or that thing. That's a really good sign. It means that inshallah, you don't have envy because it's natural sometimes to just see something that someone else has and like it. That's okay. It's, but remember, envy is when you don't want the other person to have it anymore and you wish that they were to lose it. This is where it gets really bad, right? So if that feeling has ever come in your heart, all you have to do is say, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive me, and inshallah, try not to have that feeling again. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who distributes everything, right? Okay, so uh, one thing to clarify here is that there is an acceptable type of envy and it's called ghipta, okay? And this is being competitive for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? That's called ghipta. And this is perfectly fine. So there's the harmful envy, which we just talked about, and now we're talking about the acceptable form, but there's two particular things that you have to have ghibta for, okay? So you can have ghibta, here is the hadith, there's no acceptable envy, okay, ghibta, except for two people. One who has wealth and spends it towards good causes. The other is one who has wisdom and teaches it to others. So what this tells us is that you can have this competitive good uh, ghibta for a wealthy person because you w see them that they're able to do so much, right? They're able to maybe build a masjid for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, you know, given charity to all these different really important causes. And so you look at them and you're like, oh, yeah, Allah, I wish I could have wealth too because if I had money, I would do this and I would do that and I would buy my mom a beautiful home and I would buy my father this and you want to just give your money for good right that is ghibta and that's perfectly fine and then the other type is when you see someone who has wisdom right they're knowledgeable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them knowledge of the deen or maybe they went to school and they were able to you know do really well in school and they're now working and helping so many people you can have ghibta for that type of a person because what, what you're doing is saying, well, if I had the same opportunity or the same blessing that they had, I too would want to do good works. So everything is connected back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ghibta. It's not that you don't want the other person to have it. It's not because you have hubba dunya where you just love uh, power and money and wealth and status and all you're focusing on is wishing to have those things. This is about doing good to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is permissible. So we can definitely have that. Okay. So inshallah, I think this is, yeah, that's the end of the presentation today, you guys. Uh, so let me stop here because I'm going to do about three a day. I don't want to overwhelm you guys. There's a lot of content, okay? So I want to make sure that you guys, you know, have uh, clear answers um, to your questions if you have any. So let's go ahead and use the remaining time that we have for Q&A. So inshallah, I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation today. We talked about uh, iniquity, right? Uh, we talked about um, dunya. We talked about envy, mashallah. So three um, diseases of the heart, but let's go ahead and hear from you guys. I'm going to check the chat box now. Okay. Bismillah. Wow, there's a lot of questions here. That's in here. Is it, okay for one to be is it okay for one to envy without knowing that they are envying? So very good, Bilal. I think uh, that you asked that question and I uh, answered it, right? If you have this uh, feeling and you're not aware of it, there's no responsibility on you, right? We're not held accountable for what we don't know. So if you ever had that feeling, 
then just say astaghfirullah it's okay because you didn't know that you had envy and now you're asking Allah to remove it from your heart that oh Allah let me be happy with what you've given me and not worry about what other people have and actually be happy for them too right because that is even better if you're if you see someone succeeding if you see someone have something right the Prophet ﷺ said that you haven't completed your faith, right, until you love for your brother or sister what you love for yourself. So if you want really strong faith like Iman, and then you want to be happy for when you see someone else have something. Say, Alhamdulillah, that's great. Allah gave them that thing. That shows that you actually understand that it's more uh, important to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be content with what he's given you than to ever let these feelings of hasad and jealousy enter your heart where you, um, you know, want a'udhu billah harmed on someone else just because you can't control your own desire, right? The desire is so strong that you actually would want someone else to lose it. That's why it's just not right, right? Okay, so let's look at the rest of these questions. You guys have so many, mashallah. Um, okay, so someone asked, and this is a good question because it's important. What if you're scared of death and how to remember death? You know, being scared of death, especially for some of you who are younger, it's perfectly understandable. You know, you're just starting your life and all of a sudden you're being told about death, it kind of can seem like, whoa, you know, that's, uh, that's a little too much for me. And that's understandable. But we kind of have to look at this uh, from a different lens. When we say to remember death, that doesn't mean to get dark about death and just to start thinking about all the scary parts of death. It means to just think of it, death as a, like we're all travelers, right? And that's how you have to really look at yourself is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created the soul to travel through different worlds, okay? So before we were here, for example, where were we, right? Before we were born, we were with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he put our souls into the womb of our mothers and then we came into this world. So we, we are, we've already been traveling. We just don't have a memory of that. So when you think about death, you want to just think about it like it's the next part of your travel, right? And it's not something to be scared about because you're getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as you have belief and iman, inshallah, then you'll be okay, right? That's the most important thing and that's why alhamdulillah your parents are doing their responsibility of teaching you your religion of teaching you who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of teaching you who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching you how to pray teaching you how to uh, have all of these things uh, to know all these things inshallah so that when you go to the next part of your travels which for most of you inshallah is going to be a long long way from now so you don't want to think about it like oh it's going to happen tomorrow no we're just saying that death is a natural part of life everything it's just kind of the cycle of this world right and so it, when the, our time comes, inshallah, it's just the next part of the travel. And then the final place, the final destination is inshallah going to be in Jannah, where we're all going to be together with our loved ones. And it's going to be the most exciting time. And uh, we can't even com you know, compare anything to it. Nothing we've ever done in the dunya can compare to uh, what's going what's gonna to be waiting for us in Jannah. So you want to look at death like that. Like, well, if I want Jannah, I kind of have to go through through this part, part of the travel, right? I can't skip it. Um, but that's it, not to get dark about it, okay? And so I hope that answered your question. Let's see, so there's a lot of good questions here, mashallah. Um, okay, so very good question about killing a bug if it's annoying or in your house. So there's a difference. The example I gave was on the street, minding its own business or at a park or in the you know, schoolyard or in the sidewalk even, right? That bug is living its life. It's not a pest. But if a bug becomes a pest in your house or you're threatened by it, right? There's some very poisonous spiders, for example, um, and you're afraid. Is this going to bite me? Is, could it harm me? That's different, right? And in that uh, case, yes, you can absolutely protect yourself if you have to. Um, my boys, they're on the, uh, the chat here. We have this uh, plastic bottle and it's called a spider catcher, okay? Well, that's what we called it. It's really just a plastic container from an old, I think, is it almonds? Maybe a scene can go grab it. But it's basically a, just a container that we got from Costco. And uh, once the almonds or whatever was inside of it finished, then we put a label on it and it's called our spider catcher. So what we do is if we see a spider anywhere in the house, 
we quickly go grab the spider catcher and we scoop it up and we take it outside. That's what we do because we try to be very mindful about life in general. So if we see bugs that are not harmful or maybe that are, you know, that they're not moving fast and flying at you, you could easily scoop them up and we'll do that. But everybody's different. And I know some people are very, you know, they have phobia, right? Arachnophobia. That's a real thing. They can really get like you scream if they see a spider, you know, you have to preserve your life. And if you feel um, scared to that level, khair, inshallah, but try to, again, um, if you can, not kill if there's no harm. That's the point of it, okay? As long as there's, there's no harm, especially in nature. Like we should never kill things in nature. That's just really not right because that's not in our home. That's that those things are where there should be. Allah created the world for all of us to be in, right? And it's not fair to say, oh, I'm just bored right now. I'm gonna go squash a bug for no reason. Billah. This is actually completely forbidden. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um can you still open it? Okay. What is the difference between the first and the first one? Okay. Isn't a person going to become sad if they think, think about death? So I hope I answered that question, Aisha, because if you think about death as just death itself, yeah, you might be sad. But if you think about death as really just a part of the journey to Jannah, it's not so sad, right? So it's really the way that you think about death. Okay. But the point is, is when you remember death, what that's reminding you is, watch it, watch yourself, right? You're telling your nafs and shaitan, no, I'm not going to... Um, I'm sorry, one second. How did that happen? Yasin? Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, you guys. That got, um, I don't know how that happened, but we are not uh, taking over the cameras, okay? Please, because this is being recorded. So uh, don't take over the cameras. Let's see here. Okay, bismillah. So back to the questions here. Um, so we can watch this. My dad, there's a, uh, so I'm just going over because I'm getting some repeat questions here. These real diseases. And, uh, okay, so yeah, we do have someone who said, I'm naturally scared of spiders. Um, yeah, if you're really afraid that it's going to bite you, that's understandable, okay? Um, Yes, if you are, are um, you know, working with an animal and you accidentally hurt it, there's nothing, that's okay. You know, as long as it's accidental, things, accidents happen, right? Sometimes you might uh, run into it or poke it and it gets hurt. Just, you know, try to take care of it because animals do have feelings, right? There's that beautiful story of once when the Prophet was with his companions, they were out somewhere and he kind of left for a little bit and uh, what, and one of the Sahaba, he saw a bird's nest and he just thought, hmm, I want to go take it. So he just took a, a nest full of little eggs and chicks and he put it in his, you know, car part of the caravan. And then they started walking and the Prophet ﷺ eventually joined them. And when he joined them, all of a sudden this bird from up top started flapping its wings really, really like vigorously, which is means like intense, right? And so he looked up and then the Prophet said, remember, one of his miracles is that he could communicate with animals. Very similar to, to who, which other prophet? Let's see who knows. Which other prophet could communicate with animals, right? But he could, uh, very good, mashallah, Hassan. So he could communicate like um, Prophet Suleiman. So he understood from this bird that what was happening, that someone it's a mo mother bird that someone took her babies. So then he immediately turned to his companions and said, which of you has hurt the feelings of this mother bird and taken its babies? And then that Sahaba was like, oh, sorry, it was me. And then he ordered him to put it back where he found it. So the Prophet says in the words that he used, he's telling us what? That animals have feelings, okay? that's really important for us to remember because they do have feelings. And so if you accidentally heard it, I used to have a cat and there were times where, you know, 
uh, we were playing around and she would scratch me and then I would kind of paw at her and we were playing. But if I ever felt like she, like I did something to her, I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, Juju. You know, there's times actually she would sneak past me and I'd almost accidentally trip over her, you know, but I felt bad because I, you know, accidentally, I didn't know she was there. So you, we have to remember they're animals. We're going to be held accountable. Um, but just to, to be, you know, nice enough to at least say sorry and to try to make them feel better. But as far as uh, it being a haram or a sin, if you do it on purpose, yes, of course, that's sinful. It's haram. But if it's an accident, inshallah khair. Okay? All right. So let's see. Um, very good question. I have a question about baghi. Is it where narcissism comes from? You know, um, potentially, what, you know, it could it could very well come from that. I mean, if you are willing to hurt other people for power, then it's likely that you have, you know, this problem that you, or this belief that you think you are better and more valuable, uh, you know, as a, as a human being than other people. And that's really the root source of narcissism, right? You think of yourself as better than other people and you're willing to hurt other people if you have to. So in a way, inshallah, all right. Um, so very good. All right. Thank you guys. We have come to the end of the session and you guys, a lot of your questions were, um, were very good questions. I think that I thank you all for, for, um, participating. Mashallah. That was awesome. And, uh, we will have, um, inshallah, uh, let's see, sorry. Let me check the date. The next class we have is going to be next Tuesday. Okay. So one week from, uh, well, no, today's Thursday. I was going to say one week from today. Not one week, a little less than a week from today. We'll see you, inshallah, at the same time from 5 to 6 p.m. for the next three, maybe four sets of, uh, of uh, uh, diseases, inshallah. Okay? So, inshallah, we'll see you guys. Let's go ahead and end in dua, all right? Bismillahir Rahman Rahim Wal Asr in the Linsana Lafi Husser Illa Ladina Amanu Wa Amidu Sari Hati Watawaso Bil Haki Watawaso Bisabur Subhanakalahomo the Hamdika Shadow and La Ilaha Illa Antana Safirako and Tubu Ilik. All right, Alhamdulillah. Thank you guys again. I hope you enjoyed the class. Inshallah, we will see you next Tuesday. All right. And if you have any further questions, hold on to them for me and come back next Tuesday. I'll, we'll get to them eventually. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Everybody wave. I'm going to go through the whole camera. Yay. I get to see all your beautiful faces. MashaAllah. Thank you for being here. Alhamdulillah. All right. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful iftar. Okay. For those of you who are fasting, and if you're not fasting, make dua for your families, make dua for all of us. Okay. We need your duas. Your duas are very powerful. All right. All right. Assalamu alaikum.